Hello, dear friends. Uh, greetings again from uh, Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, next week we will be having a church service already back in Belgrade. So uh, get ready for great reunion. We will gather all together and have a great uh, time in in Belgrade in fellowship there in the Balkan region with the precious Yugoslavian people or Serbian people and and uh, all the people from the Balkans. So we are looking forward to to come back to Serbia soon and uh, keep praying for us. We are praying for you. We love you and uh, let's have a word of God this Sunday morning. So before we do, let's let's pray. So dear God, we just ask you uh, to lead us and and that you would shed a light in, on, into our minds, that you would speak to our hearts, because we don't want to have just ear tickling message. We don't want to have a message which will just pump up our our uh, ego or IQ and expand our knowledge. But we want to have a touch from you, touch from the living God. This is what we are looking for the touch from the living God. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So today we have this uh, this uh, piece of portion from the Matthew chapter 21. And here's a story as Jesus is uh, entering Jerusalem during the during the Easter and uh, let's have a look on it because this has a beautiful beautiful powerful uh, words here so Matthew 21 uh, verse 2 Jesus says unto his disciples go into the village over against you and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her uh, speaking about the donkey mother and a, and a baby donkey Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. This is very interesting. So Jesus is uh, uh, preparing his triumphal entry to Jerusalem. Now he is coming as uh, the Lord, as Savior, as the Messiah. Uh, Yeshua Hamashiach, uh, as some people who love the Hebrew language would uh, call it. So Messiah is preparing his triumphant entry to Jerusalem uh, and he is uh, telling them this instruction that he will enter on a donkey. That's very interesting. Now if you are under Roman oppression you know, you are a Jew living in Jerusalem. The Romans are uh, ruling with the with their law, Roman law, and basically, you know, living in the time it meant that uh, your country was occupied. Uh, you were uh, suppressed. You know, you did not have your liberty as you would wish. You had to obey another nation, another power in in your nation and. And you are waiting for a Messiah and for a deliverance of people of Israel from the Roman oppression, but actually for the fulfillment of all the scriptures pertaining the promised land, which is uh, nowadays occupied by Palestine, part of this land. And the land is more wider and greater. So it has a it's a, it's a big land which is supposed to be given as inheritance to to Israel and you are waiting for this Messiah to come and and uh, fulfill the scriptures so he should come you know in your imagination as a military power most probably and he will you know this uh, this thought is not far from the truth when you read the book of Revelation you know at the end of tribulation Jesus will come as a military power he will come on a horse, you know, with all the saints riding the white horses. So we will be part of this 
of this uh, rescue mission and restoration for Israel and so on. We as believers. So uh, this is not like wrong idea. You know, it's uh, it's actually a very valid and truthful thought that the Messiah will come as a military power. But as you are expecting a king and you want a king, now he comes and he says, bring me this this donkey which is maybe something a little bit different than what you expected you know you were expecting a king in his glory and might and power entering you know with the military power and uh, freeing the Israel and now he comes on a donkey meek lowly humble something totally different than you would expect you know it's kind of shocking but as you see here it says here verse 4 all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying and now there's a quote from Isaiah 62 11 Zechariah 9 9 Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, your king comes unto thee, meek, sitting upon an ass, and called the foal of an ass. You know, donkey and the baby donkey with his mother. So this was done that the scripture, what was spoken by the prophet, might be fulfilled, Matthew 21 verse 4. This is amazing. So now, like, uh, we understand the future, the eschatological things, how they should happen, you know, and, uh, and we understand them based on the scripture, uh, mainly on the book of Revelation and uh, Daniel chapter 9 and, and uh, Ezekiel and, and other passages. But, but here in this time, they expected Messiah. And now he comes a little bit differently. You know, on the donkey, expecting a king and receiving a lamb. Very interesting. Would you yourself receive a lamb while you are expecting a king? Would you yourself receive someone who comes on a donkey when you are expecting a king with his military power on a horses? Wow, that's the question. Because what happens here, as it follows, you know, verse 8, the great multitude, multitude, a lot of people spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and uh, put them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna. To the son of David, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So this is the fulfillment of the scripture. Again, this is the messianic quote, recognizing the Messiah is coming. So here you have a multitude, or we could say common people, recognizing the king coming upon a donkey, the savior upon a donkey. And then, as you see, he comes to the temple, you know, he cleans the temple. And then he meets with these people. And verse 14, and the blind and lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. So now he is coming, he is doing these miracles, he is healing. And verse 15, and when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things or the miracles that he did, what would, you, what would you expect? You know, you see him doing these miracles. Well, probably you should fall on your knees and start to cry, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, you know, son of David, recognizing his messiahship. And yet it says they saw these wonderful things, verse 15, that he did. And the children crying in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were not happy. It says here, they were sore displeased. Wow, what a warning. 
here you have a priests and scribes, people who know the scripture, religious people. They know it all. Yet, you know, they they put ahead some preconceived ideas, their own thoughts, imagination, how things should be. You know, and that that becomes the leading thought of their life instead of the scripture, instead of the Bible. Because now they are not able to receive a lamb instead of a king. And yet they see these wonderful things and miracles. And the common people are recognizing it. You know, there is a joy. The Messiah is coming. He, his kingdom is being ushered into the Jerusalem. You know, this is a historical moment. The glory, you know, the invisible powers as angels and presence of God is there in the person of Jesus and 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 generally. Uh, and he is doing these miracles to, to support his uh, triumphal entry. And yet they are displeased and they don't like it. Warning. If things go differently than we thought in our own mind, you know, if things go differently, will we get angry and will will we be displeased with Jesus and his work? And yet this is the fulfillment of the scriptures. It says there, you know, Zechariah chapter 9, 9, we have it here. Rejoice greatly. This is how it starts. Rejoice. He's coming on a donkey. Rejoice greatly. Ah, but we are displeased because he doesn't come on a horse and he does things differently than we imagined. Rejoice. Are you rejoicing in the work of God? In your life? In your local assembly? In your ministry? Are you joyful in what God is doing? Because he says you rejoice greatly. Yeah, yeah I, I do enjoy, but I'm not happy. Oh, really? Rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, you know, shout, or daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king cometh unto thee. He is just and bringing salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey, upon a colt of the fall of an ass. You know, upon donkey and the baby donkey with his mother. Rejoice greatly in the work of God. Rejoice greatly. Yet the Pharisees were displeased. The spirit of Pharisaism. Seeing things, seeing miracles. The scripture is being fulfilled. This is the fulfillment of the scriptures and they are not happy. What's going on? Who, 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 can, who can explain this to me? The scripture is being fulfilled as the prophet said. He is doing miracles, supporting his entry, you know, not just saying it, but proving it. The people recognize it, the common people, they multitudes, they rejoice. And the Pharisees were displeased. Because you are expecting a king on a horse and he comes as a lamb on a donkey. And you are displeased about the work of God, about the fulfillment of the scriptures. Wow. You know, let's let's come before God and say, God, you know, I don't want to be deceived in this big deception. Having my own ideas and promoting them over or above the scripture. It's very shock, shocking. Now, in the, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Revelation, chapter 13. Pastor Scheller spoke from this chapter about delusion, actually. Just yesterday morning and it says here this is this is very interesting look at this verse 13 speaks about the beast and the second beast which is the antichrist uh, revelation 13 verse 12 and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So you see, the first beast is a, a presented as a false antichrist, you know, false resurrection. And the previous verse says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, 
and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. You know the appearance, how things appear. Here you have a time of revelation, time, uh, time from the book of Revelation, which was this was revealed to Apostle John on the island of Patmos, and he's describing this time of tribulation or God's judgment upon earth, and he's speaking about this great deception and and how does it happen? You know, someone. It says, had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The appearance, you know, things may appear. Some things may appear as a lamb, you know, meek, humble, fulfilling the scriptures. Yet he spake as a dragon. This is very important. You know, let's not look at the things how they appear. Because they may appear as a lamb, you know, as a little lamb. But he speaks as a dragon. What's the spirit behind it? How does the person speak or how does he expresses himself, his thoughts, his ideas, his heart? You know, speaking like a dragon. And then it says that the people followed him. He made miracles, verse 13. And he does great wonders and so much that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. So he's, you see, Verse 14, and he, deceive, he deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So he does these miracles, miracles, you know. First, Jesus comes in the form of a lamb uh, and does miracles for these uh, priests and scribes and Pharisees that they could believe and yet they reject everything. They rejected the prophets, their own prophets, the word of God. We said Isaiah 62, 11, Zechariah 9, 9. They rejected the fulfillment of the prophecy. They rejected, you know, the testimony of the people because the people are crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. They rejected even the miracles that Jesus did, the healings of the, of the blind and the lame. They rejected everything. Because it did not fulfill their own idea. And then later on, there is this appearance of a lamb, yet speaking as a dragon. Let's be careful about things which appear. They look like, you know, oh, it, it looks like it's good. But is it God? You know, it looks like it's, it's amazing. But, but look, you know, the aftertaste in your mouth. Like when you eat something and there is this aftertaste at the end, you know, uh, you may you may have you may have uh, some experience, you may have a fellowship, and then what's the aftertaste after this? You know, how how do, how does it speak to you the whole situation? How does that person speak? You know, this is very interesting because things may appear as a lamb. Well, I'm a Christian, I'm this, I'm that, and yet he spake as a dragon. You know, uh, the delusion comes, and Pastor Scheller mentioned this. If people are rejecting the grace of God, you know, remember the Pharaoh in Egypt. Moses comes to him and he says, let my people go. And God is working on Pharaoh's heart and he wants him to turn and to believe. And yet Pharaoh says in his pride, who is this God that I should fear him and I should believe in him? doesn't want to receive this grace given unto him, you know, and the grace was given to him in a long period of time, in the many steps, you know, and final steps were uh, the ten plagues, you know, one after another to start to make him think, pushing him into corn, and yet he rejects this grace and hardens his heart, and then eventually God hardens his heart, you know, if, if, if you don't want to, what can I do? You know, take what you want, you know, hardened heart, delusion comes, rejecting grace, not living in grace, uh, not recognizing the power of the scripture. Yeah, but you know, I thought it would be different. Oh, really? You expected a king on a horse and God sends a lamb on a donkey. Is, is that a big problem when this is the work of God? 
You know, do, do we want the work of God or do we want our own things? You know, we want the work of God, fulfilling of the scriptures, the true miracles, supporting the triumphant entry, the testimony of other believers recognizing it. This is what we want. Then I can say, you know, maybe he's not coming like a king upon a horse. He's coming as a lamb on a donkey. I receive it. I believe it. This is the work of God. I want to be part of it. And the king, uh, which brings deliverance to Israel, he might come later. And he will. He will. But right now, right now, let's, let's see the work of God. Let's understand it. You know, let's not kick against the pricks. Apostle Paul, you know, he, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees and he also was doing the work for God, yet against God. You know, he was persecuting the church and he didn't know it. He thought he's doing God's favor. And yet he was kicking against the pricks. He was, he was persecuting Jesus and his church, thinking he's doing the right thing. Very interesting. The spirit of Pharisaism, you know. And how it's recognized, we, we said, Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 11. You now it says there, uh, having appearance as a lamb, yet speaking as a dragon. The spirit which is expressed. You know, it doesn't have to be in words only. You can speak with your actions, you know, with your behavior. But the point is, you know, things may appear some way, but let's be careful let's recognize the spirit behind which spirit you are of the sons of zebedee wanted to call the fire upon a village which rejected uh jesus christ and christ turns to them and he says you don't even know what spirit you are of let's be careful about the spirit behind because we want to be in the spirit of grace and truth you know the the law came through Moses, but the grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. This is what we want. We want the true Lamb of God coming on donkey, humble, uh, and not appearance of a lamb, speaking as a dragon. God bless you. We are so blessed in these times, you know, because we have a scripture in our hands and many times even in our hearts, you know, so let's learn it. Let's ponder upon it. Let's study it. Let's meditate this. Let this to be in our heart and in our mouth. You know, when this is part of my thinking process, then what will come out of me? Scripture. You know, the word of God. The more I'm filled, the more I'm filled with the scripture, the more I'm, I'm occupied with it. You know, it cleanses me. How, how shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of God, you know, this is how we cleanse our way. This is how we are being saved from the troubles of the world. And we love the plan of God. We love the plan of God. Many times it's different than we think. But boy, I want to be part of the plan of God. Thank you very much. God bless you and see you soon. Already next Sunday in the Balkans. Dobro došli, hvala svima, vidimo se uskoro. Ciao, ciao.